Hello and welcome back to Will It Work? Today we're going to take a look at attaching some Next peripherals to the iPhone. Now if you're not familiar with Next, it was the computer company that Steve Jobs created after he left Apple. They made high-end Unix workstations with a custom GUI and their target audience was institutions and higher education. The computers themselves were sold from the late 80s to about the mid 90s and they were never a great sales success. However, they were lauded for their operating system and their development tools. As it turns out, Apple needed a next generation operating system after failing to produce one themselves, so they bought Next and used the Next operating system as the basis for Mac OS X. In fact, all of Apple's operating systems have a little bit of Next in them even today. The Watch OS, the TV OS, and even the iOS. So I thought it'd be fun to connect a Next keyboard and mouse to the iPhone, and maybe even a Magneto optical drive, more on that in a minute, and see if we could get all of that to work with such a popular device that still has a little bit of Next in its soul. But first, let's just take a look at the keyboard. Okay, so Next had two generations of keyboard and mice. The first generation used proprietary connectors, and then they redesigned both of them and licensed out Apple's ADB connector. And that's the models I have here. So let's take a look at them. As you'll notice, there's no function keys. We've got some media keys and power key over here. And some of the keys have been moved around. For instance, cap locks is down here. Control is up there. We have two help keys where the command key normally is. And what looks to be a second space bar underneath the main one. And that is actually the command key. So the idea was that when you're typing, you got a lot more surface area to push down command to do like command Q or command O. It takes a little getting used to, but it's actually quite nice once you get the hang of it. This is the ADB Next mouse. Now if I hide these left and right buttons, what does it look like to you? I think it looks a lot like that hockey puck mouse from the original iMac that everybody hated because you couldn't get the orientation. You don't have that problem here because you got these large flange buttons here for left and right and you can tell which direction the mouse is at any time. So that is the keyboard and mouse. Let's take a look at another famous next peripheral. Okay so this here is a next magneto optical disc. Next computers were the first to ship standard with a magneto optical drive. In fact they didn't even come with a regular hard drive. The magneto optical disk was the main drive. That includes the operating system, the swap file, and your personal data. Now, I think the reason they did this was because of size. A magneto optical disk like this one here held 256 megabytes. Now, that may not seem like a lot, but in the late 80s, that was huge and bigger than any kind of consumer hard drive you were going to put into a machine. However, they were really slow, and so Eventually, after a couple years, they ditched it and went with traditional hard drives. Still, it's an iconic piece of technology that's closely associated with Next computers. Now, Canon made this drive and these discs for Next, and Canon also used these discs in their own imaging and scanning products. But other than that, there are no other drives that these discs work in. Although they look very similar to the five and a quarter magneto optical drive standard that would emerge in the 90s. They are tabbed and slotted differently and they're not compatible with those drives. So trying to find one of these Canon drives and one that's working and getting its proprietary connector converted over to USB is slim to none. So for the purposes of this video, and this is just for fun, we're going to use something else in its place. This is a Logitech branded Fujitsu three and a half inch magneto optical drive. I featured it on this channel before a few years ago. It has a very industrial design, it's very boring, so I gave it a paint job to make it look a little bit more like a next accessory. So we're going to use that in spirit of the larger proprietary drive that we would never really be able to hook up to an iPhone. Now, about the keyboard and mouse, that being an ADB connector, how are we going to get that into the iPhone? Well, we're going to use this little adapter right here from Drakeware that is an ADB to USB adapter. It's got a little micro USB port on here. You just plug in one of those cables. And I like this one because it's got firmware on it that can be updated and he's got some keyboard mapping software where you can customize it. So I went with this one. It's about $30.
So what I'm going to do is try and see if we can get this whole thing to work with one ADB adapter. We've got the ADB mouse plugged into the keyboard here and then a cable out of the keyboard and we'll see if that adapter can handle both of them on the iPhone. And then I'm going to plug the magneto optical drive on the right and the USB adapter for the keyboard and mouse into a hub and then I'll place the uh, hub or plug the hub I should say into Apple's lightning uh, to USB adapter and I'll plug that in the back of the lightning dock here and try to make it look all nice and neat and then we can experiment. So let me get all of that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have everything plugged in and if I move the mouse you won't see any cursor, but don't worry. When you plug a mouse into the iPad the cursor comes up right away, but on the iPhone unfortunately you still have to turn on assistive touch. So let's do that now. Hey Siri, turn on assistive touch. Okay, I turned assistive touch on. All right, so that's good. The mouse is working. Let's see if we can get the keyboard working as well. Hey, it works great. Zoom in here a little bit. Okay, let's try out the magneto optical disc. Okay, so here's the magneto optical disc we're going to use 640 megabytes. This is manufactured by Sony. Put it in the drive here. While that's firing up, I will mention that the volume keys work here on the iPhone but I was not able to get the brightness keys to work. Apparently they did at one time, but I think there were some changes to Mac OS 13 and iOS 16, and the guy that creates this adapter is on vacation or something I wasn't able to get with him. So I think it'll be fixed again in the future. But for now, the volume keys work, which is cool. So let's go into the Files app. And there is the Magneto Optical Drive. we got a little movie on here. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. Just a fun little experiment to reunite some Next equipment with the iPhone, which, like I was saying earlier, has a little bit of Next in its soul even to this day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like and subscribe. I'll be back soon, but that's all for now. Take care.